Okay, now let's take a look at the diencephalon. Now the diencephalon comprises of the thalamus, the epithalamus and the hypothalamus. But first we need to go back to what we spoke about in one of our previous videos when I drew this image up. So this is basically a frontal section and view of the brain and the brain and then the brain stem and then the spinal cord. But remember that we spoke about that the cerebrum with the diencephalon together is known as the prosencephalon but you can refer to it separately as the telencephalon and as the diencephalon, which means that these two parts here are the diencephalon, which means this is where we're gonna find the thalamus, hypothalamus, and epithalamus. As we go below, remember we've got the midbrain, which is the mesencephalon, the pons, the medulla, which all three are the brainstem, and then the spinal cord. So what I want to point out here for the next couple of drawings is that the diencephalon sits upon the midbrain. What we're going to do is draw this image from a lateral view, except we're going to take the cerebrum away. So what we're going to draw is midbrain pons medulla with a bit of brain uh, with a bit of spinal cord with the diencephalon sitting on top. So let's take a quick look at that. I'll just move that out in the road. Okay, so let's draw midbrain pons medulla and let's draw it three dimensionally, or at least attempt to draw it three dimensionally. Okay, so what we've got is we've cut the top off and we've got the midbrain, which is all this part here, pons, medulla, spinal cord. So we've basically got this flat surface on top of the midbrain right here. And I told you that we're going to have the diencephalon sitting on top of that. So let's first have a look at the thalamus. Now, in actual fact, there's two thalami, and they're made up of grey matter. So these dense components of grey matter. And you'll find that there's going to be one sitting on this side. And one sitting on this side. So what you can find sitting on top of the midbrain, so think of that as, the, as though it's the floor or the, the top of the midbrain, in which you've got thalamic nuclei sitting on either side, these groups of grey matter. These are the thalamus. So this is the thalamus. What does the thalamus do? Well, very importantly, what the thalamus does is it's like the sorting centre for sensory input. When you touch something, whether that be uh, fine touch, gross touch, pain uh, or temperature, as it comes up from your body, or I should say from the sensory receptors, as it goes in through the spinal nerves and then goes up the spinal cord, it's ultimately gonna hit the thalamus. And what the thalamus does is it sorts that sensory information and sends it to the appropriate part of the cerebral cortex. It also sends it to other parts such as the reticular formation and limbic system, for example, so that you understand what this sensory input means in regards to uh, emotion and also in regards to sleep wake but predominantly it takes the sensory input and sorts it to parts of the cerebral cortex so it may if I were to prick my finger that pain signal from the finger would go down my arm into my spinal cord up hit the thalamus at some point and it's going to go that came from the finger I'm going to throw it to the somatosensory cortex specifically the part dedicated to that finger all right so that's the thalamus now what you're going to find is that there's actually a structure that sits between those two thalami. What is this structure? All right, well, remember that sitting behind here, we're going to have the cerebellum, which I spoke about in a previous video. Well, remember that this is the spinal cord going up to the brain stem, and then we've got the cerebellum, that the spinal cord has cerebral spinal fluid. And it's, so that means that there's actually a tube that goes through holding cerebral spinal fluid going up. And what you're gonna find is that there's gonna be swellings of this tube called ventricles. And it's actually the ventricles themselves that create 
the cerebral spinal fluid. Now there's four ventricles, and I'm going to do a video entirely dedicated to ventricles. One of these veg ventricles has a swelling that goes into that area there towards the cerebellum, and that's called the fourth ventricle. The next swelling, or next ventricle, will come up and actually goes between the two thalamic nuclei. And I'm just going to get rid of them for the moment. I'll draw them back in in a second. It comes up. Again, I'm trying to draw three, three D. And so what you'll find is that there is the third ventricle sitting right there and on either side of that third ventricle are going to be the thalamic nuclei or the thalamus. And there's going to be another one on this side. Okay, why have I told you this? Why have I told you that you've got your fourth ventricle here, you've got your third ventricle here, because I'll actually move that because I'm going to draw there. Third ventricle, fourth ventricle. Because what you're going to find is this. At the back of this third ventricle, there is a swelling. And this swelling comes out like that. Now what this swelling is, is something which you may have heard before called the pineal gland also known as the pineal body. Remember what the pineal gland does? It releases melatonin, which is a derivative of serotonin, and melatonin helps us with our sleep-wake cycles. It plays an important role in circadian rhythm. So remember that for one second, because we need to go back to this thalamic nuclei, and we, what we need to do is we need to identify a particular group of cells on the thalamus, right at the top, right at the back, posterior, sorry, superior and posterior, there's groups of nuclei right here, okay? What these nuclei are called are habenula, habenula nuclei. Habenula nuclei play a particular role in, again, sleep-wake cycles, plays a role in nutrition, plays a role in pain processing, plays a role in emotion, plays actually a number of different roles. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because the habenula nuclei, together with the pineal gland, are known as the epithalamus. So I've highlighted the thalamus for you here that's involved in, that's the sorting center, takes sensory input, sends it to where it needs to go. Now the epithalamus, stand over here. The epithalamus, remember epi means near, near the thalamus, and that's exactly where it is, is comprised of the pineal gland, or pineal body, and the habenula nuclei. Okay. Last one we need to do is the, what, what have we done? Thalamus, epithalamus, now we need to do the hypothalamus. Okay, can you see that when I drew the third ventricle, remember the third ventricle holds cerebral spinal fluid, actually produces cerebral spinal fluid. This third ventricle is sitting on top of the midbrain, but actually anteriorly, it goes past and beyond the midbrain and is no longer resting on the floor of the midbrain. In actual fact, it rests upon another group of gray matter And this gray matter here is actually known as the hypothalamus. Remember, hypo means below, and you can see the hypothalamus is actually below the thalamus. So this is the hypothalamus. What's the importance of the hypothalamus? The hypothalamus 
is the master regulator for the endocrine system and for the autonomic nervous system. Very, very important. Plays a very big role in um, uh, fluid balance. Plays a very big role when it comes to controlling the, pi uh, the uh, pituitary glands, the anterior, posterior pituitary glands and the specific hormones that they release. And also plays a very important role in controlling the autonomic nervous system. So, diencephalon, made up of thalamus, epithalamus, hypothalamus. You've got the thalamus here, two of them, thalami. The pineal gland with the habenula nuclei play a role in sleep-wake cycles, nutrition, uh, emotion, pain processing. And you've got the hypothalamus, which is the master regulator for the endocrine system and for the autonomic nervous system. Like I said, plays an important role in fluid regulation. I forgot to say temperature balance as well. So temperature regulation, um, sympathetic and parasympathetic function. So fight or flight, rest and digest. And also tells the anterior and posterior pituitary glands. Remember the anterior posterior pituitary glands? coming off the hypothalamus with this stalk. They contain hormones that when released travel throughout the body and tell the body to do certain things, whether that be grow or develop, whether that be to create thyroid hormone, whether that to um, role B for reproduction, many, many different roles. So this is a quick overview of the diencephalon.